Hi everybody, thanks for watching, and welcome to another episode of Quick Tips for your Mavic Pro. Today I'm going to share three things with you that I hope will help you as you learn how to fly your Mavic Pro. Today I'm going to talk about the new update to the DJI Mavic Pro manual. I'm going to talk about flying your Mavic Pro from inside, and I don't mean flying your Mavic in your house, I mean flying your Mavic Pro outside while you're inside. And finally, in relation to that, I'm going to talk about flying your Mavic Pro in extremely cold temperatures and how those temperatures affect your battery life and your flight time. So let's get to it. First of all, I want to thank you guys for being here and for being loyal supporters of this channel. If you're not a subscriber, consider clicking on that subscribe button and joining us. So the first thing that I want to talk about today is DJI recently released an update to the manual for the Mavic Pro online. Now there wasn't a whole lot of changes to it, but there is one significant change and that has to do with compass calibration. In the previous version of the manual, DJI called for you to calibrate your compass when the DJI 4 Go app instructed you to. But now there's three new circumstances where you should calibrate your compass. The first instance that they say is if you fly your Mavic Pro further than 10 kilometers away from your previous flight location, then you should calibrate your compass, even if it doesn't ask you to do so. The second instance where you should calibrate your compass is if you haven't flown your Mavic Pro in over 30 days. And the third circumstance where they recommend you calibrate your compass is if you're getting a compass error and you've moved your Mavic to a new location and you still can't get rid of that error, then you should calibrate your compass. Now I think they added that one because a lot of people were trying to launch their Mavic Pro from a poor location, you know, with some metal around or some strong magnetic interference. And they were not able to calibrate because they were just staying on that bad spot and they weren't trying to move their Mavic Pro. So I think DJI really wants people to try to relocate their Mavic Pro before they take off to see if that fixes any compass errors. And if it still doesn't, then you should calibrate your compass. So just keep that in mind. You know, I'm probably one of those people that over calibrates um, I calibrate almost every time I fly unless I'm flying from the exact same location. And that's probably overkill, but I figure better safe than sorry. And it's not going to hurt anything. You're not going to wear anything out by calibrating it. But, um, you know, DJI does have these new guidelines. So I would follow those recommendations. The second thing that I want to talk with you guys about today is flying your Mavic Pro from inside, whether it be in your house or in your vehicle. As you can see, I'm filming inside today. I normally don't do that. I like to do my videos outside just because I like it. And today it's six below degrees Fahrenheit. And so I prefer uh, to keep my hands and my ears and my nose toasty warm. And so that's why I'm filming inside. It's not the best acoustics, but it's better than being out there. But the reason this topic came up for me and the reason I wanted to discuss it is that a few days ago, there was a really cool sun dog. If you don't know what that is, a sun dog is like a weather phenomenon where the sunlight is reflecting off the ice crystals in the air. And we get them quite a bit up north here, especially when it gets really cold out. But these were some of the coolest and biggest sun dogs that I ever saw. So I wanted to put my Mavic Pro up and get some footage of them and get some photos of it. But I didn't want to be outside. It was actually 15 degrees <laughs> below zero that morning and I wasn't going to be out there, but I wanted to get that shot. And so what I did is I launched my Mavic Pro from outside in my driveway and then I came inside and I stood in front of the patio door and I thought that would be a good way to fly in the cold weather. And so I flew it around a little bit, just a few hundred feet away from the house and just to see if there was any connection problems and there wasn't. And then I flew it a little bit further away. I went up to about 350 feet and uh, got my photos and I got my video footage and I really didn't have any problems. There was a couple of times where there's a little bit of a flicker on the video feed, but I didn't lose any connection. I didn't notice any problems with the final recording. And so I think you're gonna be fine if you wanna fly your Mavic Pro from inside your house, but I do recommend flying from a big picture window or somewhere where you can keep visual line of sight. I did keep my Mavic Pro uh, within visual line of sight just to be sure that I had that strong connection to the controller. I don't know if I would fly it too far away from where I was in my house or in my vehicle, but I think that if you wanna fly inside on those cold days, you should be just fine if you keep it within visual line of sight. Now, in relation to that, one of the issues that's always come up, and I've watched a few videos on it, is you know what happens to your Mavic Pro when you fly in those extremely cold temperatures. And not so much the Mavic Pro, you know, I did a video on it. If you wanna check it out, I'm gonna post it up here or I'm gonna put it in the description as well. But I did a, a video on flying in cold temperatures and things to look out for. 
Um, you know, one of them is condensation. When you bring your Mavic Pro inside from flying in cold temperatures, there's going to be quite a bit of condensation, especially if you go from really cold temperatures into your nice toasty warm house. And so I do recommend bringing it in slowly, you know, maybe warm it up in the garage a little bit or in your vehicle first and then bringing it in the house. But, you know, one of the biggest issues I think that people have when they fly in cold temperatures is the battery, the Mavic Pro LiPo battery, because, you know, those batteries are pretty sensitive. They don't like extreme temperature changes. And so I've watched a few videos that have shown, you know, limited flight time when the battery is cold. And so I wanted to test that out for myself. If you've watched any of my videos, you'll know that I do like to test things for myself to see exactly how it works. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to, um, I've actually put one of my batteries in my vehicle. It's uh, six degrees below zero right now Fahrenheit. And uh, I've left the battery in my vehicle for a couple of hours just to bring that temperature down. And I'm going to fly my Mavic Pro using that battery. And then I also have a battery here in my case in the house and it's 68 degrees in here, so it's nice and warm. And I'm gonna fly the Mavic Pro with that battery as well. And what I wanna see, what I wanna test out is how fast do those batteries drain? I'm not gonna fly around a lot today. It's actually pretty windy out as well. I think the wind chill is like 25 below zero. So I'm just gonna do a hover test with the Mavic Pro. I'm just gonna hover pretty close to the house. I'm not gonna fly it too far away. And I'm just gonna see how fast those batteries drain. And what I really wanna see is, does it make a big difference if your battery starts off cold or if it starts off warm? So let's head to the vehicle and let's try that test right now. All right guys, we're in the vehicle. I'm gonna start it up because it's freaking cold in here right now. The worst part about this is, this isn't even as cold as, as it's gonna get. It's supposed to be a, a high of 15 below degrees. I can't even say it right. 15 below Fahrenheit uh, this weekend. So right now it's five below. You can see that right there. Five below outside. So it's a great day to be inside. But So I got my battery here, I left it on the dash. And uh, we're gonna put this in the Mavic Pro. We're going to put it up in the air. I'm just going to let it hover and uh, I'll bring it down to probably 20% battery. I'm going to time it, see how long that takes. I'll time lapse it so you guys don't have to sit through all of that. But uh, And then I'll bring it down. And if I have time, I'm going to put the, uh, the warm battery. I have that in my pocket right now that I brought from inside the house. I'm going to put that on and, and see how long uh, I can fly with that battery. If I don't have time, I'll have to do it after work today. This is actually my lunch break. Yeah, and so I'll just have to do it when I get back home after work. So let's, uh, let me get things arranged here and I'll get the Mavic up and then I'll record it on my screen so you guys can see how long it takes. Holy moly, <laughs> it's cold out there. One thing that I should mention, it is a little bit windy today and so this isn't a real accurate test when it comes to battery life simply because the Mavic Pro is going to have to fight with the wind a little bit, but I am going to just fly it off to the side of the vehicle here and let it hover right there and it's out of the wind pretty good right there. So we'll do that, but keep that in mind, it is a little bit windy so that might affect it a little bit. Now as you can see here we have 98% battery life, so that's pretty good. And uh, this is the battery that actually I had in the pickup for two hours at five below. So I'm not sure what the temperature of the battery is at this time. I wonder if I can pull that up on here. Let's take a look. Battery right there, 2.5 degrees Celsius and going down 2.4 degrees. So that's good. Uh, we can see the temperature of the battery right there. So let's go ahead and, uh, and lift it off. First thing I'm gonna do here though I'm going to put this on smart return to home and make sure that I got everything set up. Return to home altitude is at 30. Obstacle avoidance is on and everything's ready to go. Okay, so let's go ahead and lift off. Take off. And we'll just leave it right there <laughs> so I can 
keep an eye on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this. I'm gonna time lapse it. We're just gonna let it hover right there and we'll see how long it takes. Okay, we are at about 60% battery. Let's uh, check the temperature. Uh, temperature is 20 degrees Celsius and continues to climb. And we're still getting good voltage. We're getting uh, about 11 volts. You know, it's getting down there a little bit, but still within the uh, operational parameters, I guess. All right, that brings us down to 20%. Let's check the battery real quick. We are at 27.1 degrees Celsius and running still a little over 10 and a half volts. So let's go ahead and bring it down. Man alive, that physically hurts your face to be out there for just a couple of minutes. So, <clears throat> so there we go. We got it down to 20% and actually I think it performed quite well. I was surprised. I thought the battery would drain a lot faster. I'm not sure what the exact time was. I'm actually out of time right now. I have to get back to my actual job. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to work, make some money, come back home and I'm gonna use that other battery, that battery that uh, that's in my pocket right now. I'm actually gonna go put it back in the house so it is still nice and warm. And then we're gonna run that test again um, using a warm battery and see if there's any difference in that. So uh, I'll see you in a few hours. Okay, so I'm back and it's still freezing out. It's a little bit warmer, it's a negative three. Uh, so <laughs> no, it's not warmer, it's still freezing cold. But I got the new battery, or not the new battery, a different battery on the Mavic Pro right now. It's the one that was warm. And so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna do the same thing that I did earlier today. I'm just gonna go ahead and fly it near my vehicle here and uh, see how long it takes to drain that battery from fully charged down to 20%. Once again, I'm getting the compass error warning, so I'm gonna have to go out there and adjust the Mavic Pro's position which I'm not looking forward to. <laughs> okay, got her done. Here we go. Let's go ahead and lift off. And right now our battery is starting at 17 degrees Celsius. So it's about 15 degrees Celsius warmer than it was before. Um, so we'll see what that temperature gets up to. I think the maximum, uh, the last one got up to was 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so, and we are running at 11.8 volts right now. So we're gonna go ahead and let this hover. We're just gonna keep it in the same position uh, relative same position that we had the last one at and we'll try to duplicate the circumstances as much as possible the wind is about the same as it was earlier today the temperature like I said it's negative 3 right now it was negative 5 earlier so that's about the same um, the other thing I forgot to check on this battery this one's been charged 47 times and the other battery has been charged 46 times and so they relatively are about identical as far as usage and so that should be um, pretty equal so let's just go ahead and let this hover a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and move it a little further away and there we go so we're at 92 percent right now so that's where I'll start the timer on the other one and we'll time lapse them and see what the difference is All right, 
right, we are coming up pretty close to 20% here, so I'm gonna get her closer to the landing pad. And let's check the battery. Right now the battery is at 28.6 degrees Celsius. So about the same as the first battery. And our voltage is running right around 10 and a half or 11 volts. So that also is very similar to the first test that we ran with the colder battery. So let's go ahead and bring this down right when it hits 20%. Go ahead and stop that timer right now so there we have it now based on my preliminary uh, estimations there really was no difference uh, between those two batteries the one that started a little bit colder and with the warmer battery I think the battery discharge was about the same I won't actually know it until I upload these to the computer and put a timer on them and see but I think we're gonna see there really isn't that much of a difference on battery drain starting with a cold battery or uh, a warm battery and the other thing is I don't think there really was much of a difference with battery drain when you compare it to a nice warm day like you know it's five degrees below or three degrees below and so in my findings in this unofficial test of course just a reminder none of my tests are really scientific but uh, based on the test that I did today I don't think that the battery discharge was any more fast than it was on a normally 70 degrees day. So just a little recap today, make sure that you calibrate your compass according to the new DJI manual standards. And as you saw today, I had to adjust the position of my Mavic Pro. I didn't have to calibrate the compass, I just had to move it to a new location and I was able to fly just fine. Secondly, if you're gonna fly your Mavic Pro while being inside and your Mavic's gonna be outside, just be sure that you're in front of a nice big window or that you have visual line of sight at all times. I don't know what would happen if you flew far away and sat in your bathroom and flew your Mavic Pro. You might be okay, but I wouldn't try it. Uh, but maybe that's another test for the future. And then finally, if you're worried about flying your Mavic Pro in the wintertime when it's cold out, uh, I wouldn't be concerned. Uh, you could fly in pretty cold temperatures. If you guys got anything out of this video, uh, please click on that thumbs up, that like button that helps out this channel so much. Makes me feel good. Feel nice and warm and fuzzy inside too. Helps you feel good. And if you have any questions about anything that I did, go ahead and put those in the comments below. Also, you guys, what I'd like to ask of you today is I love doing tests on the Mavic Pro and on the Spark. So if there's something that you want to see, something that maybe you haven't seen someone else do, uh, go ahead and put that in the comments below and I'll try to do as much as I can. I'll try to test out and do some comparisons on the Mavic and the Spark. So put those in the comments as well. Finally, if you're just watching this video and checking out my channel for the first time, consider clicking on that subscribe button like I mentioned earlier. We do learn from each other on this channel and we do visit with each other frequently. So if you're uh, interested in that, go ahead and click on that subscribe button. I wanna thank you guys sincerely for watching and as always, fly safe and fly smart. Hi guys, it is the next day and it's zero degrees, so it's warmed up a little bit. This is actually the warmest part of the day for the next 48 hours, it's gonna to continue to decrease. It's supposed to be 25 below tomorrow, so I'm looking real forward to that. But anyway, that first battery I tested, we started at about 35 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a good test, but it's really not what I wanted to test. What I wanna test is, uh, battery that's below freezing and how long that will last. And so what I'm gonna do for the next five hours, I'm gonna leave this battery sit on my dash and then on my lunch break, I'm gonna take it home and fly with the Mavic Pro and see how long that battery takes to get down to 20%. And um, you know, I just wonder if it's gonna make any difference because sometimes if I leave my Mavic Pro in my vehicle and I see something I wanna get some footage of, I wanna know if I can just fly it right away or if I need to warm up those batteries first. So uh, for the next five hours, I'm gonna be in working, but I'll see you guys in a couple of seconds. All right guys, I just got home for lunch and I'm gonna grab this battery. It's been sitting on here for five hours. We're gonna check the temperature before we take off. I'm gonna make this really quick because this video is getting too long. So I'm just gonna do a really quick time lapse and at the end I'm gonna post the time that it took to discharge from 92% down to 20%. Thanks for watching again guys and have a great day.